Hi, my name's Alan Brown. I'm a technologist and an educator, and also I'm a professor in digital economy at the University of Exeter Business School. What I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about how I think we're moving to a new phase in thinking about digital technologies and digital transformation. I think we're shifting from a way of thinking about the world in terms of we're digitizing, we're automating using digital technologies, we're replacing some manual ways of working with some automated ways of working, to a new form of digitization where what we're more interested in is creating new kinds of value and using technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning to learn more about what's happening in the domains in which we're interested in so that we can provide new kinds of services, new kinds of offerings. I'd like to start with a little example. So let's take an obvious example. Anybody who's driving a car today, a relatively modern new car, and you're driving along and you see something in the road that makes you want to brake, you push your foot hard on the brake. What used to happen some years ago, of course, is that there was a liquid in a pipe. And as you press the brake, the liquid gets compressed through the pipe and pushes up against a disc that stops the, the wheel of the car. Some years ago, of course, that switched and became an electrical signal through a piece of wire. So the amount of, of distance that your foot went down on the pedal sent a signal down an electrical cable that said to a sensor at the other end, hey, move the, the brake this much. But what happens today? What happens today is when you put your foot on the brake, a set of software is executed. Some algorithms run that says, hey, Alan's just pressed the brake. He pressed it pretty hard. I think he wants the car to stop. What should we do? And a series of algorithms runs to say, how do we interpret this? Now, what's interesting is there's a set of data gathering that goes on that says, what's the state of the car? When was it last serviced? How much tread is there on the brakes? What's the suspension like? What's the state of the environment around the car? What's the road like? What did the last hundred cars down this road do? Is it wet? And then what's the state of Alan? Is he agitated? Does he normally drive this way? Is this a route he comes on often? And there's a whole set of information that starts to get gathered that says, now we know all this information, how shall we interpret this action? And what shall we do? And it may break the car in a certain way. It may reduce the, the, the speed quickly. It may adjust because of the road is wet. But an action occurs. And then that action is recorded and lessons are, are, are learned from that action that are reported to others, that are recorded so the next time that Alan breaks, something happens. When, when did that change happen from this idea that we pressed a pedal and there was a direct correlation to what happens to a, there's a set of interpretations, often driven by things like software and algorithms and data? That happened very recently. Our ability to be able to do that, to do it in a consistent way, to do it in a high quality way, to do it in a way that makes a difference and can be controlled and managed, has only happened in the last few years because of a series of improvements to those technologies, to the way information is stored and gathered, to the way it's managed in very complex distributed environments where the information has to flow, has to flow through the air, through wires, through multiple computers, through multiple organizations. And those algorithms have become much more sophisticated in the last few years because of our improvements in understanding how computing works, how data can be managed, how we run algorithms to make predictions from that data. And if this is happening where every time I press my foot on the pedal of a car, imagine what's happening in your workplace. For example, in professional services areas where we're involved in things like auditing, like interpreting very complex legal situations, like understanding contracts and contract management. We're trying to understand our clients, their needs, their behaviors, what new services they want and how they want those services delivered, how we can improve the value of those services and compete more effectively in a very dynamic marketplace that's changing very quickly due to changing circumstances in the world around us. 
What's happening is data is being gathered all the time, being stored and managed, being uh, examined and mined to understand what this data means. And these algorithms are becoming much more sophisticated about understanding the behaviors around us. What we could say is this move, the current move from digitizing to digitally transforming, is really about understanding context. How can we learn more about what's going on? How can we use that knowledge to improve behaviors, to understand those behaviors, to create new services and new offerings that might be of value, to optimize our own limited capabilities and practices, limited because of the kind of time and the availability of skills, so that we can use them in the most effective way, in the highest value services, providing a return to our clients and to our organizations. So when you look at your own organization, providing sophisticated services based on knowledge, based on a lot of experience, based on a history. Think about how these digital technologies have moved from the basic view of digitization. We can automate how we do uh, appointments management. We can automate how we uh, retrieve documents and search documents through to much more sophisticated intelligence-based approaches that say, how can we begin to anticipate needs? How can we begin to react differently to circumstances for different clients based on the context in which they find themselves, based on the environment in which we operate, based on new regulations and new interpretations of those regulations? This allows us to provide services in new ways. This allows us to think about how we interact with our clients through new, new value models, through new business models that say that we can serve them differently. We can off, off, offer new services at new price points that will give them more of what they need and give us more value back from providing those services, using our, our resources in more positive and meaningful ways. This is the kind of digital world that we're moving into right now. This is the change that I think is happening over the last few years. It's been driven by a lot of the constraints in the world around us. Obviously, we've seen a lot of issues through COVID, through changes in regulations, through the, the current financial crises that we're going through. That will drive change to say, where's the value? How do we use data more effectively? How do we use the, this kind of intelligence and the kind of communication protocols that are, are driving the, the way in which we interact and connect ourselves with the people around us to produce value that matters to me, to the people we serve, and to the organization that I'm, I'm a part of. That's the future of digital transformation.